All right, all right. What do we got going here? I'm so close to finishing this power wall. Uh, of course, that's those those are gonna go over here, right? But what's happening here? Well, finally, I was able to get all of these battery packs uh, assembled as battery packs, right? Uh, I paired up uh, four of these. Well, actually, two in in parallel. Right? Oh my God! What is this? Why is that? Oh, hold on. Let me just see where that is. There we go. So there's two packs here in uh, parallel, connected in parallel, and then I paralleled all the uh, sense, you know, the voltage sense units. I, on most of these, like this one here, I took off the BMS, but in some, I just left them on. Like in this case where they didn't have that conformal, uh, uh, conformal, uh, what is it called? Uh, whatever, that goo that is on here, the coating, right? Uh, conformal coating, I think that's uh, what it's called. I just took them off because it was just easier. And then on these guys that didn't have it, I just left them, uh, left them there. Uh, will that cause any problems? I don't know, I don't think so. I think these are dead, but I guess this will serve as a test, right? I am doing this so that uh, I'm doing the experiment here, right? And these are, uh, what is this? One, two, so 13, so 26. 26 of these packs. Each one is 444 watt hours. You do the math. I think it's like over, uh, just under 12 kilowatt hours or something like that. It's got quite a bit of cells. Um, I'm using these uh, DC power strips that, that I have on the website. I doubled them up, as you can see here. You see that? They're doubled up. So two of them, uh, I will load them, load test them, and see how well they do, right? I think I have a video where I load tested these in the early days, and I think a single one will do like 80 amps, right? It gets kind of hot at, uh, it gets hot at 80 amps but you could kind of run it hot, right? And I think that's about the max that you can do before then it starts getting real dangerous there. And obviously you don't want to run this stuff too hot because then it's just energy being, um, energy that is being wasted. And uh, Bobby always running into the chance of this stuff, you know, just melting or whatever. But, uh, would doubled up like this, I think you'll be able to be over a hundred amps at 36 volts. Yeah, you do the math. I will run, I will try to run, well, I don't know. I'll load it up and see, I think I can put two, uh, two K inverters in here. And so that will probably 4,000 Watts, right? I don't know what the amperage will be at 36 volts. But we'll, I'll do it, and then we'll get the thermal camera out. We'll test the stuff and see how well it works. So, as obviously, the other thing that I did was to use these, right? I'm going to use this ribbon cable to connect all of these packs in parallel, right? So, group number one, there's four cells here are connected in parallel to the four uh, cells in group one on the other pack, but then to all the other packs. Right, so this will essentially become one 10S pack, right? Uh, 26P. Well, actually, no, more than 26P because each one is a 4P. So 26 times 4. You do the math. They're over 100P, I guess. Uh, and I'm waiting to connect this. I didn't want to connect it here because look at this. I made this little thing to check them. Oh, come on. No. So they're they're not all perfectly balanced. And what I'm doing here is I'm charging it, right? They're all around 38 volts right now, but some of them were like a little bit less, 37. I think one was like 39. There's like about two volts difference between all these packs. So I connected them first, let all these voltage kind of average out. Uh, and then now that they're all connected here together, then I'm, I'm using this uh, just the 24 volt power supply with this uh charging thing this is a dc to dc that has uh uh charging parameters right it's got a constant current constant voltage 
uh, settings and the little pots in here. So the, yeah, I made videos about this. I'll put them on in the uh, description of the video. And then I'm using the little meter here. This one is telling me that is charging at a rate of 500 watts, right? And it's 38 volts, so 13 amps. So 13 amps are going into these batteries. And obviously once it reaches uh, 42 volts, this thing will stop charging and then after that i will check each individual pack to see how well the uh the the cell groups are balanced if they're all around the same then i'll connect this ribbon here then i'll connect these two to the ribbon and then you know if depending what where the average group ends up then i'll decide to do uh like a balancing thing because these this this can balance here right and then after that We'll put these all in a uh, box here, and then I'll go over the BMS. Uh, do I know which BMS I'm gonna use? Let me see here. I think, yes, I think I'm gonna use just a little BMS, something like this. And what I'm gonna set it to do is just turn on and off a switch, right? So when the BMS turns off, right, then it's gonna turn its MOSFETs off, and then that's gonna, turn off a an actual switch that will turn the battery off and then the balancing will happen by the tiny little circuits that are going to be inside of this one so uh, these are fairly good cells uh that they're well i don't know i guess they i don't know if they well i guess we will see i think they're fairly good cells that are somewhat okay match but i can't i have no data to base that upon because basically this pack could come from a bike that or uh you know uh, a device that was used uh you know maybe two days on the field uh this one maybe that device was used six months on the field right so i don't, I don't know i guess I, I have uh the numbers here that i could look up and see uh, what batch numbers, you know, data manufacturer, all that stuff. But I'm like, that almost seems like too much work. It's a good idea to do that sort of stuff, right? But uh, in this case, I'm just going to go for it. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to see how well it is managed. Uh, I will be able to check, you know, individual cell voltages. I'll run them. I'll run it daily here, right? Doing tests. We'll test it for a few months and then we'll see how this goes, right? But these are, so far, these are demonstrating to be very, very high quality, very good cells. Um, and so the only way to put that to the test, right? It's uh, and get, provide some data is by testing it, by just doing a project like this, running it like a, you know, 12 kilowatt hour uh, power wall and then just load testing it and cycle test it and see how well it does after you know 100 cycles or something um 100 cycles would be like just over three months uh yeah that would be awesome to to do uh and so that's that's what's gonna happen here i'm gonna have uh you know as you know i made the the custom box here uh and hopefully i'm gonna show you i don't know if i'm gonna show you the whole thing about the, how i made this box but Maybe I'll just do like a graphic. Here's what you do, here are the measurements. You buy a sheet of aluminum, you cut it, and then you do that, and you know, I don't know. I think I'm gonna concentrate more in the fact that uh, what this this means, you know. Uh, this is going to be somewhere around $100 a kilowatt hour, right? So what does that mean? $100 a kilowatt hour, it's a 12 kilowatt hour. Yeah, so for what, so for $1,200? Definitely, I think somewhere around fifteen hundred dollars for this. Is that? Is that really? Yeah, I think so. I think that's right. Yeah, each one of these is like fifty-seven dollars. By the way, you can get these on discount right now on Jack Thirty Five. If you buy four or more, you get a sixteen percent discount, which puts them at what, like fifty bucks or something? I think. I don't, yeah, so 60% uh, off of uh, 57, whatever that is. Uh, so I think you will be well below like $1,500, uh, then $100 or something for the box and then uh, whatever else you need. Yeah, this is going to be a very uh, affordable. Uh, I'm not going to say it's easy to build because I here I am like on day four. And yes, of course, I've only spent like 
four hours a day building this. And, uh, and half the time I'm uh, very distracted by doing everything else that I have to do. But um, yeah, I think you will, once I make the video and show you, the, you know, in, in details or in steps, you will have a much better time uh, and uh, it will be much easier for you to put this together. But I think this is kind of game changing when it comes to building DIY power walls. Oh my God, these are, I'm kind of, ex I'm excited. I'm excited to install this in the box, install it, put it, you know, just screw it onto the wall, install the BMS and just, just start powering this building, right? I'm gonna show you uh, how to load shift, how to buy energy at night, uh, charge this uh, during off peak, and then discharge it during peak time. So that is gonna be very, very exciting. I can't wait to finish this and uh, upload the video. So anyways, thank you for watching. This is just an update to the MH1 power wall that I'm doing here that is gonna go in that. Uh, yeah, thank you for all your support. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you, bye.